Well, if you've seen in the other videos, I've been talking about, obviously, the plant body. There are three kinds of, of uh, tissues. First of all, the dermal tissues. That's the thing that covers the leaves as well as the stems. We also have the ground uh, uh, tissues, which are the roots. And then we have all the vascular tissues that are in the leaves and the stems and also in the roots. So they're the three different kinds. Today's lesson is on plant tissues. It's sometimes a kind of a confusing topic, but I hope that today what I'll be able to do is sort out the four different types of uh, plant tissues that we have here on display. The first one is called the uh, meristem. There are basically two types of meristem. There is the apical meristem, which you're going to typically find at the, um, the very tips. Right here is apical meristem, and then on the next slide you'll see uh, near the very bottom where the roots of the plant will be the other thing. They will grow up or uh, down, and they're a very specialized group of tissues or cells that divide very, very rapidly. The second type is what we call lateral uh, meristem. Lateral meristem um, is responsible for the outward growth, going up this way. You'll also find some lateral meristem, which is kind of like apical meristem, just because it's on the side, but it's still considered apical meristem. And this is where a shrub or a tree or plant will fill in on the sides and become uh, a little bit more dense. But essentially, there's only two, lateral meristem and apical meristem. And on the, uh, on the root side of things, it's pretty much the same thing. If you take a look at this picture here, uh, the apical meristem is usually found right in here. So this group of very specialized cells are going to continue to uh, divide. And as they do, they get uh, into this zone right here. This is the zone of division. Let's start off again with that. This is the zone of division. So they're rapidly dividing. And then this zone right here is a zone of elongation. And this is where the, the cells begin to mature. And as the name implies, it elongates to give the roots the lengths. And it also gives the, the roots the power to actually kind of blast through some of the soil particles as well. So we have the apical meristem right here, the zone of division, and then, of course, the zone of elongation. That's what gives the roots uh, their growth. Now, the other type of cells um, are called um, surface cells, which, of course, become then surface tissues. And that's primarily the outer covering, the epidermis and the paradermis. We're going to look at those surface uh, tissues. We're going to first of all look at the epidermis. As this picture implies, one of the things you're going to see in this one is you're going to see all of these cell walls, these outside cell walls, form this very characteristic structure of plants as rectangular. It's made out of, of course, uh, cellulose and lignin uh, being the cell wall. So the cell wall is the thing that provides the protection against things from going um, in and keeping everything else inside the cell. So um, the surface cells will, will be doing that. In addition to that, uh, you're going to see uh, epidural or epidermis type cells, surface tissues on things like the flowers, uh, the outer, uh, the outside of fruit, um, the cutin, the stems, all of that is part of the surface tensions in the uh, epidermis. Now the paradermis, uh, the paradermis is something a little bit different in that uh, if you take a look at this, it's going to be involved primarily in secondary tissue growth. Now the primary growth has to do with the epidermis um, and uh, the uh, paradermis or the paraderm is basically dead cells layering on top of each other to form, well, kind of like bark. Well, that's what it is, bark. But you'll notice that this, these dead cells are uh, also forming uh, cork cells. And oops, let's get that done. And there are the cork cells and they're going to be on the, on the outer portion of of the uh, the plant, and of course in trees you're going to see this this bark uh, uh, take form. So this part right here, that's going to be the epidermis, and the thing that forms outside of that is the paraderm, made out of cork cells or uh, basically it's it's dead cells. 
Now we're going to get into the ground cells or ground tissues now. And there are three different types of ground tissues. The parenchyma, the collenchyma, and the sclerenchyma. Uh, those are kind of funny words, but they do definitely have different characteristics. And you'll find them all over the plant. They're very, very specialized and allow the plant to be able to grow, to mature, to repair itself, to move things around. Because really, when we take a look at plants, moving things around was a pretty big advantage by being able to take resources from all different parts of the environment and then move them to certain locations in the plant was a, it was pretty big, a, a pretty big uh, strategy for uh, organisms. So let's take a look at all three and compare them. The parenchyma um, is essentially the, the bulk of the cells that you'll find in a plant. They're pretty much used for the regular daily maintenance and repair and, and um, it's things like the chloroplasts um, and of course the, the mesophyll, the um, a palisade layer, all of those they're relatively thin wall. They do have some lignin and cellulose in them, but they're relatively thin, thin wall and pretty uniform. So the parenchyma cells are the ones that do most of the, of the kind of the heart and soul of, of a plant. That's called parenchyma. Now let's go to collenchyma. Collenchyma are a little bit different because they're primarily used uh, for growth. You're going to find these on stems uh, uh, primarily, but you all also will find them in the roots as well. Parenchyma cells you'll find kind of all over um, um, the plant body, but parenchyma cells primarily uh, in the growth of the stem. Like for instance, if you've ever snapped a, a celery stick, uh, you'll notice those little long strands in there. Those are the parenchyma. That's supportive tissue made of uh, a lot of lignin. And if you'll notice on some of these cells, um, they're not very uniform. On some sides will be very very thick walled. Other, other are going to be kind of thin-walled, um, but they're relatively flexible. Like, for instance, at the end of, a, say, a melon or a or, uh, pumpkin, that part of the stem that hooks up to the, the fruit um, is very, very flexible and has to be. But it's also, as it dries out, has to be also um, pretty firm as well. So it's relatively strong, flexible. It, what it does, it helps give the plant growth as it elongates, and it also gets rounder, it's got to be able to stretch. And that's what collenchyma cells do, do is allow for stretch. Now, the um, sclerenchyma cells, they're used primarily for different kinds of support. And they kind of give it all up to die, because, and then they leave their structure behind. So these are pretty thick walled, pretty uniformly thick walled uh, cell walls with lots of lignin. And their job basically is to grow as big as they can, as thick as they can, die, and then leave their structure behind for support. Um, this is actually, uh, if you uh, ever eaten a pears and it's that gritty kind of taste, these are those cells inside the fruit. And we're looking at a cross section of them, and that's why it's kind of gritty because it's very mineralized. Um, and right here is the lumen or the interior of these specialized um, cells. And right now they're uh, alive and active, but over time what it'll do, it, it'll actually um, actually die off. Now the other th uh, thing on this is sometimes that these little short fibers um, will actually grow on like on the inside of, of nuts or some fruits. These little fibers right here are, are kind of left behind. These little bit of fibers will line the inside of nuts and some fruits as well. So that's the sclerenchyma it's for support. Colenchyma is it, for flexibility and growth. And parenchyma is kind of the daily maintenance and growth of cells. So that should, should take us to the next level of, of tissues is vascular tissues. And we're going to be looking at phloem and xylem. And we're going to look at the xylem first. Here are all the words that are associated with um, things like vascular uh, tissues, uh, like cell walls, pits, they're lignified. You'll find them in flowering plants, they're elongated. Um, you're going to find them in, uh, in plants that have uh, some maturity. So that gives you just some kind of a, uh, I've used a wordle to, to create that. It gives you some, some words to kind of to go by. So let's get rid of that and take a look at what may, it might look like. Uh, 
Xylem moves water. So when we're looking at xylem, its major function is it's going to move water in the plant. It takes it from basically the roots and you move it up to the canopy. And that canopy is the thing where all the leaves are. So it's actually going against gravity. And how does it do that? Well, we've been studying how that does that uh, using low pressure right around the leaves and evaporation and transpiration. And we'll talk a little bit more of that in the lab. But basically, uh, xylem is working against uh, the physics of, of gravity. So the tracheids um, help with that. So the tracheids are essentially a tube or like a straw that's pinched at both ends. To give you an idea of what it might look like, it looks something like this. These are real uh, uh, tracheids. And what they do is they'll have little pores or pits in them to allow some water to escape. But it's pinched off at the end. It's like a straw that's been pinched, as I said before. And that's kind of what they look like. Now, if you look at, the, at this particular cross-section of a western pine tree, you'll notice there's any tracheids. Uh, there's parenchyma cells. There's ray cells. And, and what's really kind of unique, right next to the tracheids, sometimes, especially on pines, you'll find these resin canals. And it, this is the thing that gives that kind of that piney smell. The resins are, are exuded uh, through the wood, and you can smell it. And that's what gives it that unique, it's those, those resins. Okay, notice again, on, on trachids, the, the ends are all closed up, so there's no actual flow like a straw. It goes through the pits, and those pits are located right like right there. You can see those little pits. All right. Also, what uh, xylem provides are uh, some things called vessels. These vessels are the straws. They're the things that actually do most of the conducting. Uh, the trachea has some uh, supportive and some conductive, but really it's the vessels that do most of the transporting of water. You can see on this one, it comes right on through. It too has pits, but they're open-ended. And they're, they're more like straws. It allows the water to be able to travel through them, the destination from roots to leaves. And, and then, of course, they're the other direction we'll talk about in just a second. So that's what the vessels are. You have tracheids, or you have vessels. One is, is, is conductive, that's the vessel, and the other one is supportive, um, although it does do some conducting, which is the tracheids. So... That's the the, the uh, zone. Now let's look look at the phloem. The phloem uh, uses this this thing called sl uh, uh, sieve elements. The sieve elements are the thing that kind of slows things down. Remember, you take water to the very top, and then what has to happen is that water's got to come down somehow, and it comes down in the form of uh, basically a, a sugar water. Because as water goes up, then what happens in the uh, leaves is a um, uh, sugar is added, or uh, glucose is added, and when it gets mixed up, kind of like caro syrup, it's a little bit slower. And that's the thing that helps prevent all of that water at the top from just racing down. But also, the sieve elements also, because they have little perforated holes. And let me show you what I mean by that. Now, if we to compare the xylem with the phloem, you'll see, like in the xylem, it's much larger holes. Because you're using lar large volumes of water. And then we have these fiber, uh, these fibers that provide uh, support as well as the tracheids. And that's also supportive. It conducts a little bit, but mostly right here is right through these vessels. Now if we look at phloem on the other hand, you'll notice uh, that these phloem elements form these plates with these tiny pores. And as water comes into the sides and sugar comes through the center what's happening gets mixed and it slows it down now they also have some supportive structures a companion cell and fiber that keeps it that helps keep its shape and it allows it to give more of a skeleton uh, kind of um, support for all of these vascular um, tissues 
So that kind of helps you give it. I hope that helps you kind of give some kind of idea of how phloem and, vi uh, and uh, xylem works. The major uh, feature of the phloem is the sieve elements, and then the major uh, um, the, the the major players or the major construction for the xylem is the the vessels and the tracheids. So those two particular tissues help make up those two things. And there's some sieve plates. You can see the little perforations in them right here. Help slow down the flow because it's got to go through those sieves first. And it's a large molecule, glucose, glucose and water. And because it's kind of syrupy, it's going to go through it a little less fast. Now, to help you kind of review, here's another Wordle. It has lots of terrific words in it to help you kind of jog your memory. Things like parenchyma. You're going to see parenchyma in those kind of cells that do what? Right, kind of the daily things. To grow, to repair, uh, to do maintain. Whereas the sclerenchyma cells, you're going to find those primarily um, in those kinds of, uh, of um, tissues that are more supportive in nature. Um, uh, so you'll see them in, um, in fruits. You'll see them inside of, of uh, things such as uh, some of the nuts uh, because they provide support because they have lots of fiber in them. Chlorinchoma uh, cells, on the other hand, if you look right here, are more for growing. They're a little bit more flexible. They, they, their walls tend to be not so uniform. Some thick in one area and light in another so it can move and support. And of course, lignification or lignified, um, of course, lignin is a major component in, in, in all of those. I hope that you have um, gotten a lot out of this. You're going to be writing a story uh, primarily about how a plant will take its water and nutrients and convert it basically into food. And how does it get from the canopy, from the canopy to the rest of the body of the plant. So this should be a, of some value to you as you begin writing your stories. We'll see you in the lab soon. Thanks.